But how do we see errors in the classroom? Are they indicators, as they should be, that, that really intuitive, deep learning is about to take place? Because that's really what a mistake is an indicator of, by definition. If someone doesn't make any mistakes, it doesn't mean they're learning. It means they could, they're demonstrating something that they could already do. Now, that's not learning. That's demonstration. Take back that's into modeling. our own hands the idea of training of PE teachers. Let's share and collaborate on a systems theory way of thinking. Not just the accidental £200 to go for central London kind of training opportunities. Let's the share it for that, us. That, that serves the way human beings actually learn that the assessment should be taken at the time that the student chooses it or the, or the, or the student and the people that are around the student choose for it to be, not at some arbitrary date in the summer. I did think about talking to you about that tonight, but it just felt like a battle that can't be won at this particular moment. So I just stepped back away from it. But you're absolutely right, you know. Why, why is that? Who, who are these people that decide that a student uh, has to have this level of knowledge on this date in their life at this particular moment? You know, it, 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 if we started, would we make it like that? If we really, were starting, what we're starting to talk about now is the concept of blended learning. Blended learning is the concept of taking the best possible things from the classroom, the things that we all like doing, you know, interacting, group work, project work, exam questions, mark schemes, refining, uh, essay writing, all those things, taking the best things from the classroom, taking the best things of the internet, things like self-paced lectures, online quizzes, data, and smashing them together so you have a blended exactly. environment. It could be deemed as a little bit threatening. It could be something that feels, like I said, a little bit edgy. But in fact, what we're trying to do is actually have a voice and be able to say back to the exam boards and the awarded bodies, look, we think you can improve in this area, but your great strength is in this area. And if we can provide that feedback to the exam boards, we as teachers are represented, but also the exam board has an opportunity to listen really and to, us. to back this event and be part of our movement. So be a host, be an attendee, be part of what we are. Why is it that great ideas, collaboration, sharing, have to be put on an agenda, have to be placed on a meeting, have to be made to happen. Why is that? Why is it that intrinsically the educational model that we work in doesn't at its core and as its nature provide those opportunities? Why does it dissect and cut off um, teachers from one another? Why does it place us all in different box shaped classrooms often with the doors closed? I know many of you will say to me well in our school we keep the doors open. I don't mean it literally. Never mind the door. What about the wall? What about the fact that we're all segregated, partitioned, we're all, we're all marked off, striped up and sent in there? To be on our own, really have a high quality conversation with someone unless you're ultimately in the same room and you can you can read each other's body language in that environment. Yeah. You can't necessarily do group work. You can't necessarily develop sort of um, higher order thinking skills um, through through the internet. But what you can do is make the teaching available whenever the student needs it, not when, as I used to do in my old career, teach yeah. when I'm ready to do it and the scheme of work says I should be teaching. Finally, uh, I'm going to sign off simply by saying that this is a completely open source event. It's a completely owned event by you as much as me, okay? I don't own this. Josh doesn't own this. You, you Sport Trust doesn't own this. This is a completely open source idea and we're just sharing. Let's take back into our own hands the idea of teacher, PE, teacher development and training. Let's no longer be reliant on waiting for the inset day, waiting for the conference, waiting for somebody to come and observe our lesson. Let's develop one another and share and collaborate. Say that one of the most exclusive concepts we have in education and again I may frustrate some here but it's the idea that we teach some content say on Thursday morning at nine o'clock till ten o'clock and that's a one-time only deal I'll deliver that material to you and then that's broadly it worksheets passport questions bit of homework maybe we'll go back on revision I would simply ask why is that tutorial not available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every single day of the year? And again, if you know my work, you know, you know what I mean by that. But I think it's a very exclusive thing that we do that in education. It's something that we can challenge and change. That's not to say that we never deliver something in the classroom. It's to say that the standard experience in the classroom does not necessarily need to be someone standing at the front presenting information. The key to the data audience. tracking is that if students are doing this and constantly growing, you need to find the moment where they stop moving up the very moment, the day, the second that that student stops making that progress. That's what I mean by live volatile data tracking. Now in clever systems, that doesn't give the teacher more work, it gives the teacher less work. It gives them more time to actually intervene based on that data.